everybody and welcome to Did Jesus Exist Episode 4. There are three other videos, so be sure to check those out. Today's non-biblical source is Pliny the Younger, and it is going to be a little bit longer of a video. Just like Tacitus, Pliny was a Roman official, a governor, and he even was often requested to prove officials were extorting citizens. His most noticeable victories included condemnation of a governor of Africa and a group of officials in Spain. Pliny was an avid writer, having published ten major books containing various letters, many of which contained historical information about Pliny's relationships with people such as Emperor Trajan. His letters mark the time when Rome recognized Christianity separate from Judaism. He found Christianity to be harmless other than not worshipping idols and emperors. With that, he executed Christians who did not denounce their faith. Because he was unsure of what to do, he wrote to Emperor Trajan for advice. It is my practice, my lord, to refer to you all matters concerning which I am in doubt. For who can give better guidance to my hesitation or inform my ignorance? I have never before participated in trials of Christians, so I do not know what offenses are to be punished or investigated, or to what extent. And I have been not a little hesitant as to whether there should be any distinction on account of age, and no difference be recognized between the very young and the more mature. Is pardon to be granted for repentance, or if a man has once been a Christian, is it irrelevant whether he has ceased to be one? Is the name itself to be punished, even without offenses, or only the offenses perpetrated in connection with the name? Meanwhile, in the case of those who were denounced to me as Christians, I have followed the following procedure. I interrogated them as to whether they were Christians. Those who confessed, I interrogated a second and a third time, threatening them with punishment. Those who persisted, I ordered executed. For I had no doubt that, whatever the nature of their creed, stubbornness and inflexible obstinacy surely deserved to be punished. There were others possessed of the same folly, but because they were Roman citizens, I signed an order for them to be transferred to Rome. Soon accusations spread because of these proceedings, as usually happens, and several incidents occurred. An anonymous document was published containing the names of many persons. Those who denied that they were or had been Christians, when they invoked the gods were, in words dictated by me, offered prayer with incense and wine to your image, which I had ordered to be brought for this purpose together with statues of the god, and also cursed Christ, none of which those, Christ, those who are really Christians can, it is sad, be forced to do. These I thought should be discharged. Others named by the informer declared that they were Christians, but then denied it asserting that they had been, but had ceased to be, some three years before, others many years, some as much as twenty-five years. They all worshipped your image and the statues of the god and cursed Christ. They asserted, however, that the sum and substance of their fault or error had been that they were accustomed to meet on a fixed day before dawn and sing responsively a hymn to Christ as a god and to bind themselves by oath not to do some crime, but not to commit fraud, theft, or adultery, not falsify their trust, nor to refuse to return a trust when called upon to do so. When this was over, it was their custom to depart and to assemble again to partake of food, but ordinary and innocent food. Even this they affirmed they had ceased to do after my edict, by which, in accordance to your instructions, I had forbidden political associations. Accordingly, I judged it all the more necessary to find out what the truth was by torturing two female slaves who were called deaconesses. But I discovered nothing else but depraved, excessive superstition. I therefore postponed the investigation and hastened to consult you, for the matter seemed to me to warrant consulting you, especially because of the number involved. 
where many persons of every age, every rank, and also of both sexes are and will be in danger. For the contagion of the superstitions had spread not only to the cities, but also to the villages and farms. But it seems possible to check and cure it. It is certainly quite clear that the temples, which has all been almost deserted, have begun to be frequented, that the established religious rites, long neglected, are being resumed, and that from everywhere sacrificial animals are coming, for which until now very few purchasers could be found. Hence, it is easy to imagine what a multitude of people can be reformed if an opportunity for repentance is afforded. Here, we can see that Pliny is not a Christian, but recognizes Christ was a real person and refers to the miracles of God as superstition. This superstition spread not only throughout the city, but the countryside too. This means the belief was spreading like wildfire which the only thing that could compare to it would be the spread of pride through the use of social media. But there was social media during these times, just God's people sharing their testimony. Thank you so much for listening and watching, and I recommend staying tuned to my channel because after the conclusion of this series, I'll be doing a comparison on the two main religions that have Jesus, Islam and Christianity.